seven tips for marathon racing. We've done this before, but we're doing it again. How's everyone doing? Welcome back. I'm on a little bit of a running break right now, as many of you know. Actually, question of the day, right at the get-go. What is your next marathon race? All right, are you registered? Maybe it's a little bit of a projection. Maybe you're waiting for registration to open up. So that's the question of the day, all right? Fall marathon racing season is a, is a little way, depending on when you're watching this, is a little ways off, but it's not too far down the road. So at this point, many of you know, I've done, now I'm not, I'm not a crazy veteran, but I'm getting a little more experience at this point. So we've got Amsterdam in the books, New York City times two, the second one was a little rough, and then Rotterdam, my most recent uh, marathon, just about six, seven weeks ago, where I set my marathon PR. So I'm getting more and more experience and I'm taking all of all four of those races, what I experienced in the streets of, oh man, the streets of these, if you have never done a big city marathon, you just gotta do it once in your life, just to experience the crowds, the atmosphere. Go Seth, go Seth, go, go Seth, go, 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 go. Frankly, the love. What am I saying at the end of every vlog? Uh, love each other. The fans that are just, they're just, it's their neighborhood. It's their streets that are closed down for us runners. They come out of their houses, out of their apartments, and they cheer, and they make signs, and they whistle, and they have bands along the way. It's just that you gotta experience one big city marathon once in your life. I'm telling you, just once, if you're a trail runner, just do one in your life. You will not, I promise you will not regret it just to absorb the love out there. All right, let's dive in. We got seven points, seven tips that I wish I would have known before racing my first marathon. Here we go. So some of these are new. Some of these I've said before on the vlog, okay? So number one, study the course. And this is an addition. It's it's com combined here. Study the course. I did not mention this, you know, a couple years ago. And know where the aid stations are. Oh, so, so key. I, I don't know why I did not mention this a couple years ago. So studying the course, know the elevation profiles, okay? Here's a great graphic of the elevation profiles for the major marathons, the uh, Boston, New York, Chicago, Berlin, London, and Tokyo, all right? Isn't this just a, the coolest graphic ever? Uh, but also along the course, know where those aid stations are. And I guess I just thought of this right now, what are they offering at the aid stations? Is it, you know, is it Gatorade or, you know, how's your stomach gonna react to Gatorade if that's all they're offering? Or is it, so get to know, like email the race director, email the, mar, you know, the team that's putting on these, these aid stations and just get to the bottom. You know, you're gonna have bananas, you're gonna have, you know, granola bars. What are you gonna have to offer at these aid stations to make sure you're fueling properly for all 26.2 miles? Sound good? So really study that course and it just helps so much also mentally so there's no major surprises on race day when you're running through the streets of whatever city you're running through all right number two this is brand new drop bag preparation is key okay so drop bag is the bag you're going to leave at the usual well depending on the situation, the mar depending on the course of the marathon, but sometimes you check it in at registration, sometimes you bring it to the starting line and then they, sh they ship it, they drive it to the finish line, but just make sure your drop bag has is really well planned out, okay? For the clothing you're gonna need before the race, but then you're probably gonna leave at the starting line, okay? Uh, and then also the little snacks, little drinks you want just before the start line commences, just before the gun goes off, all right? So you're gonna have a little snack, maybe you, you know you just don't wanna start on a, on, a, um, on a hungry stomach by any means, all right? So make sure your drop bag is really, really dialed in. That is something that I have learned and getting better at, not saying I'm perfect, but getting better at as I do more and more marathons. And then usually you have a number, just so you know of the details here. Usually at registration, they give you a number or a sticker of some sort to put on the bag so that they can identify it as your bag, usually correlating with your bib number. Just a little side note there. All right, point number three, get into the correct corrals. This was my major lesson from the New York City Marathon number one, 
where I was not in the correct corral, so I had to dodge and weave and, and, and juke and spin to get through the crowds of New York City. It was wild. So just make sure the time that you submit to, uh, is, is accurate and is, you know, sometimes it's a prediction, but especially for the big city marathons, you don't want to end up in the incorrect corral because either you're going to have a ton of people you know, dodging around you and passing you, and you don't really want to experience that. Or you're going to be trying to dodge and weave through all these people at the starting there. You know, the first, it could be the first, frankly, couple miles. The streets of New York. Before it starts to spread out a little bit. So that is key point number three. Number four, this might be the most important, is don't hesitate to find a pacing group that is gonna run at the pace that you are trained to and that you believe you can run to based on, I would say, uh, your past experience at the half marathon distance. So you don't wanna just, in my, you know, based on you know, my opinion here, is you don't wanna just jump right into the marathon distance. You wanna do some half marathons ahead of time. And one of the reasons those half marathons will help you predict your marathon time. And frankly, you may just have to run a half marathon and submit that time in order to get into that race. So uh, finding a pacing group ahead of time is really, really nice. Sometimes there's official groups, just so you know, you can search around on Facebook especially, uh, but there's official groups for big city marathons that, okay, if you wanna run in the nine minute, uh, nine minute pace, you know, find us here ahead of time and we will, and even they have people, it's so funny, they have people who are designated pacers who are really good at pacing and they have a sign, they have a, like a, a pole, uh, they have a backpack and then a pole and then on that pole above their head says nine minutes a mile or seven minutes, 30 seconds a mile and then you just find that, uh, you find that person and you just stick with them no matter, you know, you know no matter what um, until you get tired or maybe you get you feel so good at the end that you can pass them eventually but anyway so pacing is key number what are we on number five oh yeah gel practice i should have grabbed the gels gel practice is key okay and actually this is going to be interesting there's there's a new one a new tip here in a second gel practice so i would recommend at least three times in your training block leading up to the marathon on your long runs carry the same amount of gels that you're going to carry in the marathon and then go through every single gel even if you feel great just to get and i realize they're sometimes a little expensive these gels but if just to get your stomach kind of used to and and just the practice of pulling the gel and we'll get to this in a second uh, out of your shorts or maybe out of your vest and opening it putting it in your mouth and then swallowing and it's not as easy as you might think when you're while you're running. Now, if you need to stop and walk to get the gels down, totally understand. But a lot of times at the faster paces, you're not going to stop. You're just going to kind of keep jogging, maybe slow down a little bit and get that gel down. All right. So practice the gels three times in your training block uh, on your long runs before the race. OK, so maybe it's like week, you know, six, 12 and you know, 14, or depending on how long your training block might be. Now, this is a new one. This is a new run. Woo, here we go. Get excited. When you hit register for your marathon, boom, register. Also, at the same time, and again, you might have to pinch some pennies, all right, save up a little money. I would immediately go over to your favorite running website or go down to your local running store and buy five pairs of running shorts. Now, <laughs> like I said, what are you talking about? So the reason being is you want to practice and figure out what are gonna be your race day running shorts or tights, all right, whatever you're gonna be wearing. Now you might choose to wear a vest. I don't like that. I feel, it just feels a little too inhibiting for a, a faster road marathon. I would prefer to carry, this is the key, carry your gels in your shorts. But you wanna practice getting the gels into your shorts and more importantly, out of your shorts on your long runs when you're practicing, but you you know buy five pairs and make sure they have a good return policy. So you return four of the pairs that you end up not liking and you find your favorite pair of running shorts 
or tights and you, you practice with them for the entire training block. And then if you really want to, you could buy a fresh pair right before the race. But the key, key, key is to practice getting the gels into the shorts and out of the shorts, into the shorts and out of the shorts so you're not fumbling and bumbling around on race day. Ooh, that has been a lesson for me over these uh, past four marathons is just really dialing in your race day gear, especially the running shorts. All right, sound good, sound good. All right, moving on, here we go. Oh, is, are we already on the last one here? It's true, the race truly does start at 20 miles. All right, it's been my experience almost in every single one where it's maybe 19 miles, it's maybe like 22 miles, but it's not a myth, the wall, it hurts. And so mentally preparing yourself uh, through the long runs, but also through the workouts, for that wall moment. It's not a myth. Sometimes you read about it in books or maybe runner's world or wherever you're running, you're reading about running blogs. Like it does start to hurt and you gotta be ready for it. You gotta be ready for it physically, but up here too, okay? Up here too, all right? So just prepare. That's tip number seven. It's not a myth. It is true. It hurts everybody, not the same, but it, it's whether you're elite or whether you're back of the pack, doesn't matter. Everybody in between, it really does come down to what you're doing right up here in practice. All right, there you have it. Those are my seven yeah, tips that I, I wish I would have known before know. racing my first marathon, gosh, two and a half years ago in Amsterdam. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Comment of the day, question of the day, Brent Miller, there you go, says, also not a question, but thank you for making the vlog simultaneously accessible to beginners and experienced runners alike. Well, hopefully, hopefully, Brent, what I just shared just a minute ago helps you as a newer runner. As an adult in my late 30s who is just now getting serious about running, your channel has been my go-to for everything from learning about shoes to training strategies to channeling that runner's mindset in a positive way and appreciating the journey. Oh, isn't that what life's all about, Brent? And in running, it's like appreciating the journey, appreciating the ups and the downs. And I'm going through a little down right now, you know, with my, my hamstring, but uh, I know I'm gonna get through it. I don't know how long it's gonna take. Just like in the marathon, you're gonna hit those low points, you work through them, you get those gels out of the shorts easily because you practice during those long runs and then you just, you, you power through, you power through. Whew, when it hurts, oh my goodness. I could talk a long time about, about that. I guess I already asked the question of the day. Uh, what is your next road marathon? Are you registered? Let us know in the comments. All right, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Onward we go. We will toss it to, um, hmm, I guess, I guess Rotterdam, Rotterdam. We'll go, um, we'll go the edited vlog, all right? Not the raw vlog, we'll go edited vlog from Rotterdam, right there, right there, right there. Okay, see beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.